O. We spent time with artist Kim Perrier at his studio in Bridgetown, Western Australia, to learn about his current project, Carbon Nature, and participate in the collaborative art project. This involves casting my full body into a plaster mold and filling that mold with charcoal to create a Carbon Nature charcoal sculpture that is then matched with and fixed to the remnants of a tree. We take you on that journey. We also found the time to sit down with Kim and explore the ideas behind his work. Art and design, we'll say art because it's all part of it, you know, is the stories, it's the myths, it's the legends, you know, it's the music, yeah, it's the writings, it's the books. Your car is a piece of art. It was designed by a designer, you know, a creative person who wanted to create something. But then also, I mean, art is a baker. A baker, you know, making fantastic pastries. That's art. A chef, you know. A, a bricklayer. You know, really wanting a fine crafts, crafted job, you know. I mean, there might just be rows of same bloody bricks. But if they take pride in what they do and its outcome, is that not being credible? A craftsman, a craftsperson, that's art. Art is the most essential element in our lives. Nature's the fuel. Nature's the fuel. Where does the creative process start and stop? It doesn't. It has no beginning, it has no end. Carbon Nature grew out of work that I started um, about five years ago, creating bark people. So we would use the same process where we would we'd, um, um, make a mold of a human uh, model and then lay it up in bark. And um, but all the time I'm out in the bush looking for bark, there's just that much charcoal around. I just started thinking, you've got to be able to do something with charcoal. And, of course, you know, having already come up with the terminology human nature, because it's similar to carbon nature in the fact that I joined them as one word. We started using carbon nature uh, um, as, as, well, a carbon, as a, as, a, as a new material to create these human sculptures. That was the beginning of it. But of course, it's grown so much because of, you know, the, the relevance of carbon, the symbols of carbon, the story of carbon, you know, the fact that everything is carbon. Carbon is the great attractor, and it attracts other elements. And carbon allows those other elements to bind together and then become a new element. Carbon defines um, all these fantastic 
array of chemical chemical structures only because it exists yeah and they're attracted to it there's either five or six naturally occurring carbon sugars two of these carbon sugars are the glue that holds our dna together every carbon life form on this planet share those same two carbon sugars a single celled amoeba has the same two carbon sugars containing holding gluing its dna together as us and every other life form that we see around us we are all equal in that sense I truly believe that we need a new symbol, new symbols of our carbon unity to nature. Um, we don't have any symbols that actually talk about the unity of humanity and nature. They don't exist, which I find bizarre. I think that you know, in, in the times that we we're going into now, where there's so, so much uncertainty as to, you know, where we're going to end up, I think that we all need a bit of hope. And there's nothing greater than a, a symbol that talks to you to give you that hope. And I think the the marriage of the human form with it absolutely purely natural form um, um, speaks volumes because the two become one you know, they're unified they're, there's a unity which can't be broken and talks about our equality our equality to all life forms on this planet that's what's missing in all of our conversations, uh, politically, religiously. Yeah. Um, not many people talk about that. But it's, it's the most important conversation. So that's what I do. Carbon is, it's the only reason why life on this planet exists. It is 4% of the universe is carbon. How you use it, how you, you defile the planet via your use of carbon, or how you celebrate carbon, um, is it's a choice you make. It's absolutely criminal that we can't leave it in the ground. I mean, for one thing, you know, it's a resource that in time, they might not burn. They might do something completely different with it and use one hundredth of the amount when they actually come to understand what coal truly is. Because coal is just compressed life forms compressed into a carbon mass.
No, but we bring it out of the ground and we talk about, you know, it 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 being sold in hundreds of thousands of tons. You know, well, are we squandering it? You know, to just because we are still so primitive and we haven't figured out how to truly use it properly. Fantastic ideas should never die with an artist or an inventor, you know. Um, I think if you have a fantastic new concept or idea, it's your, um, um, it's your duty to put it out there and inspire other people, you know, to do it. You know, you change happens through positive um, measures, and no, and and they were they always started with something negative. You know, they generally, you know, there's you know we need to fix this problem, and so in the process we end up inventing new ways or new languages or new new performances or 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 new discussions around you know this negative element and turning it try to turn it around. Well, I guess that's what I'm doing, is I'm trying to turn that around. I've always felt connected to nature, and now I feel there's a part of me that will live on through this sculpture. Not just in the sculpture park, where my charcoal body double will stand in her burnt-out tree, but in the story this is all a part of. The story all of these sculptures, people and trees are part of. The story is part of the same story that has existed on this planet for millennia and continues today. Somewhere along the way, much of humanity has become disconnected from nature. We became disconnected from the reality that humanity is one of many species dependent on a diverse web of life. Humanity has become complacent with taking more than we need. How we write the rest of the story is up to us. I hope that through this story, we can reclaim carbon and our carbon unity with all life. <laughs>